Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome if you're new. Today, we're going to look at what short selling is, how it works, the risks and the costs associated with short selling, and hopefully this information will help you better understand what has happened with all of the hedge funds and people shorting GameStop stock and AMC and all of those stocks that we heard about in the news. Remember to subscribe to the channel if you're new here and let's go ahead and start off with what short selling actually is. Short selling is a high risk way to profit from falling stock prices. So you're basically betting that a stock price is going to go lower. So let's break this down. In the stock market, there are two very broad ways that you can profit from stocks. One is called taking a long position. The other is called taking a short position. A long position is probably the typical way that you think about the stock market. You want to buy a stock for a low price and you intend to sell that stock for a higher price, making a profit buy low, sell high. That's where that comes from. The higher the price is when you sell it, the more profit you will make. That is called a long position. A short position is a bit more confusing, but it's basically the exact opposite of a long position. You want to sell a stock high and then buy it back low. So you profit when that stock price actually goes down. When you short a stock, the lower the price goes, the more you will profit. I want to make it a abundantly clear that when we're talking about taking a short position or a long position, we are not referring to short or long-term investments. Whenever people say, oh, I'm going to hold on to that stock short-term or probably hold on to it long-term, this is not what they are talking about. They are not talking about shorting a stock. When you short a stock, you are profiting off of the price going down. So shorting a stock is not the same thing as when people say a short-term investment. So now that we have that out of the way, I'll explain shorting in a very simplified way. We'll build this scenario around a guy named John. John, for whatever reason, thinks that Tesla stock is going to go down in price. In order to make money from that guess that the stock price is going to go down, John wants to short Tesla. So John is going to have either a broker or a brokerage. For simplicity of this example, we're just going to say that he has a broker. The broker can try to find Tesla shares for John by either going to an institution, maybe another broker, or maybe even another customer's portfolio. Regardless, the broker finds a share of Tesla for John and borrows it. The broker then turns around and will sell that share of Tesla on the market for John. So in this case, we're going to just say that Tesla stock is at $1,000 for one share of Tesla. So if that one share of Tesla is currently selling for $1,000, that amount, so $1,000, will be credited to John's account. So as time passes and the Tesla stock price is moving, John actually ends up being right and Tesla goes down to $700. Because John was shorting the stock, because he was betting on that stock price going down, he is able to profit by buying back the share at the current price. When he buys it back, this can also be referred to as covering his position. So John is going to go ahead and let his broker know that he wants to cover his position in Tesla. The broker is going to buy one share of Tesla at the current price, so at that $700. The broker is going to use the money from John's account and then they are going to return the stock to wherever they borrowed it from. This is all kind of abstract because when you are actually buying a stock or or shorting a stock, you're not going to see any of this, but this is what is technically going on in the background. So the bottom line is that John sold Tesla for $1,000 he bought it back once the price dropped to $700. So his profit off of shorting Tesla stock was $300. Unfortunately, if John had been wrong and Tesla's stock price had continued to go up, he could have lost a lot of money. When you're shorting a stock, there is absolutely no limit as to how much money you can lose. With a normal long position, let's say that you buy a stock for $1,000. As the stock price goes up, your profits will continue to go up as well. Technically, there isn't a limit on how high the price can go. But in this long position, the most you can possibly lose is $1,000, the same amount that you put in. 
and you would only lose that full $1,000 if the stock price literally went to zero. But what would have happened if you had shorted that exact same stock in this exact same scenario? Well, when shorting, you only profit if the price decreases. But if the stock price goes up, your losses actually go up as well. Since there isn't a limit on how high the stock price can go, there's no limit as to how much you can lose. But the maximum that you can ever make on that short position is the price that you shorted the stock at. So again, in this case, that's $1,000. So with short selling a stock, there's a lot more potential on the downside than there is on the upside. There are also other hidden costs with short selling. The first is dividends. If you earn dividends on any of the stocks that you are shorting, those dividends are not yours. They belong to the broker. So you do not earn those dividends. So remember in our scenario with John, how his broker had to go and find a Tesla stock for him somewhere. Well, there's also a cost for that broker or brokerage to go and find those stocks for you. When you are looking to short a stock, you are likely going to see them categorized in two ways. ETB, which means easy to borrow, or HTB, which means hard to borrow. When something is categorized as easy to borrow, that means that there is a supply of that stock. It should be easier for them to find for you, and it should be easier to be able to short sell it. Hard to borrow means that there is a limited supply of that stock, and it's going to be harder for them to find a share for you to short. If you are trading a hard to borrow stock, there is going to be a fee associated with that. And these fees change depending on which brokerages you're using, depending on which stocks you're trying to trade. And these fees can change pretty much at any time. In addition to this, there's also interest on any margin, which is money that you borrow. So short selling can only be done in a margin account, which is an account that you are able to borrow money in. I'm not going to fully go into this because it could be its own video by itself, but this is something that you want to look into because there are different rules and regulations for margin accounts on how much money you actually have to keep in there. And that's usually going to be dependent on how much money you're borrowing. But again, these amounts vary from brokerage to brokerage. So always, always check that. So when you short a stock, there are at least two main types of margins that you want to pay attention to. The first is called initial margin. And this is the amount of money that you have to have in your account to even be able to make the trade, to actually be able to even start shorting a stock. After you make that transaction, there is something called maintenance margin, which is the amount of money that you continuously have to keep in your account after that transaction has been made. This introduces some of the major risks with short selling. So if you drop below that margin requirement, you are going to get something called a margin call. This is where your brokerage actually calls you up or sends you emails and is like, hey dude, you don't have enough money in your account. You have a couple days to get that balance back up or we're going to start selling or covering your positions to regain some of our money. And if that amount isn't enough, too bad, you chose a junkie stock, too bad. You lost all your money, too bad. You still owe them that money and you have to pay them back. Now, when this happens to a large group of people all at the same time on the same stock, this is what is called a short squeeze. A short squeeze is when the price of a stock sharply increases because of all the short sellers having to cover their positions. If they're losing money, they want to get out. And when they are forced out of their positions, it drives the price up and forces more and more short sellers out the higher and higher that stock price goes. This is exactly what we saw happen with GameStop and AMC. These huge hedge funds were actually shorting these stocks. And as the stock price kept going up, more and more of them kept being forced out because they were losing so much money as that stock price was driven up. And so that is exactly what one of the biggest risks is, like we talked about earlier. You can technically lose an infinite amount of money when you are shorting a stock. 
You can only ever gain as much money as you put in when you are shorting a stock, but in theory, if that stock just kept going up for all of eternity, you could lose an infinite amount of money. So short selling is not something for beginners to be playing around with. It's incredibly risky, and as we saw happen with GameStop, even the most experienced and knowledgeable investors on Wall Street can get burned by short selling. So be super careful, do your research, do your due diligence, Remember to subscribe to the channel and I will see you guys next time.